It's frag swap time. In today's video, we're gonna get the frag tank extension cleaned up, loaded up, and we're gonna to head to the swap to sell some coral. Also, I'll let you know how I did sales-wise this year. Let's go. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. I upload a video at least once a week, so if you wanna follow along, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Today we're gonna to go ahead and clean up the frag tank extension, get it all ready for the frag swap. We're also going to load it up with a bunch of coral that we're gonna to take to the frag swap. I figured I'd combine a couple videos in one this time, so parts two and three are pretty much in the same video this time around. If you want a more detailed look at frag swaps in general, I have two other series that I've done previous to this. So if you're gearing up to do one yourself, you might reference those first. I give a little bit more detail in the process, especially when it comes to being a beginner at a frag swap in those. So go ahead and check those out when you can. Quick question before we get going here, when you attend a frag swap as a hobbyist, do you like to get there early and cherry pick or do you like to wait to get all the deals at the end of the frag swap? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Oh, and real quick before we get started, I have an announcement at the end of this video and I'm super excited about this opportunity. I will tell you more at the end or I guess if you wanna skip everything and just go spoil the surprise, you can do that too. All right, let's get this tank ready to go. Flashback. Just before the frag swap, we we're less than a week away now and I'm cleaning up the frag tank extension. We're gonna do a water change on the frag system. I've got the rack out. Another rack over here is ready to go. I'm just gonna clean this up as much as I possibly can. And then I'm going to start putting frags into the extension that we're gonna sell in the frag swap on Saturday. What's interesting is I feel like this being my third frag swap, I am the least prepared that I've ever been because I feel like now that I've done it a couple times, I thought I had more time and I don't. So we're gonna be on scramble mode for this last week, but that's okay. As we approach the frag swap, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm ready to go, kind of, and let's get this thing cleaned up. One of the drawbacks to having a show tank that is connected to your main system is that it collects all of the things that your main system also collects, including algae and coralline algae. I think the pros outweigh the cons though. One of the biggest benefits to having an extension on your system like this is that you can prepare or start preparing for the frag swap ahead of time. Also, the racks that I made fit perfectly in the coolers that I'll be using later in the video to transport those frags to the swap. Once I've finished cleaning this disaster mess of a extension, I'm gonna go ahead and load it up with some frags. Two days later. It is the night of frag swap setup. I've got most of this stuff ready to go. I need to fill up a little bit more, but this year I'm really excited because I'm offering a few higher end things at great prices. So um, I've got some mini colonies that I'm gonna be putting up for grabs. I just really wanna thin out the frag tank because I wanna do some other things. I wanna get some bigger pieces. So just a quick status update before I tear all this down and we start packing up. Got a good selection here. Gonna add a little bit more to this come tomorrow. And I just got a whole bunch of mushrooms ready to go. Uh, you can see these orange red ones. Got a Mardi Gras in there. Uh, if you look under here, you can see the jawbreaker. And here's a huge red one under here. It's coming out of the cup. So I think those will do really well tomorrow. Uh, a lot of people really liked the red orange mushrooms last time. We're gonna go set up and I'm gonna come back home and see what else I can bring tomorrow, if anything. So uh, this year's a little bit different. I think this might be my last frag swap for a while just because uh, it is super hectic. We'll see. I said that last time, I think, but you get to this point and you're like, I, I could use some extra money to do some extra projects. And that's really what this money is for, is I really want to revamp this space. We've been talking about it for so long. It just needs to happen because aesthetically, I mean, look, card, cardboard. I'll keep one up, I promise. This feels a little bit more normal this year. Hey guys. 
Hey. Alright. Night before the frag swap. Take a look around. Some still have to show up, but we're getting there. What I'm at. Uh, tomorrow I'll give you a little tour of all of the coral as it is opened up and all that kind of stuff. So uh, tonight I'm just gonna let everything get settled. We'll let everybody get settled, and then tomorrow morning, McDonald's breakfast, and we're selling some coral. Early the next morning, we watch as Ben prices his nims. <laughs> So what will it be? I'll say this, if your swap offers you the opportunity to set up the night before, take that opportunity, especially if it's your first swap. You're really gonna thank yourself the next morning when everybody else is scrambling to get their stuff up and you're good to go. One of the keys, especially if you're new to doing a frag swap, is to start preparing a month or two out. If it's your first one, you're probably gonna have to gather a bunch of supplies, which is gonna take time. Also, in the case of preparing coral, you're gonna wanna let that heal up before you take it to the swap. Now I'm speaking from a hobbyist point of view, maybe you're doing a local swap. This isn't necessarily for the vendors. I'm sure you guys have your own system of doing things, but this is for people that wanna do one or two frag swaps a year. A little bit of a line today, a socially distanced line, I like it. We had a mad rush for the first 90 minutes or so. It was crazy. I remember looking down at my watch because the frag swap opened at 11. I remember looking down at my watch and seeing noon and I was like, it's only been an hour? That was nuts. Shout out to the couple of people that drove up from Arkansas, had a gentleman come from Branson, had a couple come from Kansas City just to hang out and just to see what our swap here in St. Louis was all about. And it was really cool to hand out some stickers and you know have that good conversation with people that watch the channel. So if that was you, thank you so much for coming out. One of the biggest tips that I learned early, early on in frag swaps is pricing your corals. A lot of people do not put prices in their tank. And I get it, as the day goes on, you might wanna change your price or lower the price or make sure that you sell some corals. However, I feel like people really appreciate it when you label all of the coral in your tank. At least put it in 10, 20, 30, 40, $50 sections like I did. Not everyone wants to have a conversation about price with you. They wanna come up, they wanna look at the price, they wanna see the coral, and if it's something they have questions on, they'll ask those questions. But not everybody wants to just hang out and talk to you. One thing I did differently this year is I had some high-end coral. So I didn't do this in years previous. I think the highest I offered was like $50, and I had a few bites here and there, but I had an ask section this year, but the one thing that was different about my ask section, because a lot of vendors do this, uh, is mine, I put on two pieces of paper, taped them to the table, had the ask section right there with what was in it, some high-end zoanthids, uh, jawbreaker mushroom, things like that, and I had the price right next to it. So you didn't actually have to ask me, but it was nice because people would look at the paper and they would be like, oh, which ones are those? Which ones are those? And it was perfect, because we had that conversation going. I also had other information on there, like from two to three, everything except the ask section is 50% off. Um, two, two to three was the last hour of the frag swap and other information like that. So if you have any deals or anything and you don't wanna like mark up your tank and put a whole bunch of stuff all over, then go ahead and print up some pieces of paper with just information on it. People loved it. I think this was a huge game changer and if I do any frag swaps in the future, I'm definitely gonna continue doing that. All right, before I start breaking down here, um, just wanted to show you how we did. So not too shabby, really. Uh, this will all fit on one rack to go home, so did pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and tear down here and we'll we'll start to do a debriefing here in a little bit. Now that we're done, let's go ahead and tally up what I made this year. I wanna include everything that I brought along, even if I didn't pay anything for it, like I've had it from years past or you know I got it from the first frag swap and just had it and reused it because I want you to be able to have a checklist if you ever wanna do this for yourself. You at least have a good rough guide on what you're gonna to need to have for a frag swap. All right, here we go. All right, let's talk through all the equipment. Again, I'm gonna leave the full checklist below in the description with links to as many things that I could find for you. All right, so my tank, lights, which were AI Prime HDs, reactor, which is the two little fishies reactor, 
racks. Those were all $0. I either had those already or I repurposed them from my frag tank. Bags, I used four inch by 12 inch polyurethane bags. Those were $4 for about 100 of those. Heater, wave maker, also $0. Had those from before. Tablecloth is actually one that I've used since day one on the frag swaps. I've been reusing it every single time. The square reader is how I took credit card payment. We had terrible reception at this place, but if you went to the window, everything would process. So every time someone used a card, I had to run to the window really quick or have somebody do that for me. Uh, thanks to Tyler Inland underscore reef did that for me a couple of times. I appreciate it. Acrylic pointers, a towel you can steal from home tubing you can also steal from home with water changes and stuff like that the coolers are essential these are pretty standard across the board when it comes to vendors a lot of vendors use these exact coolers these coleman stackable coolers they work great uh, they're not necessarily watertight but they're not leaking water everywhere they're pretty nice i had to get some new tweezers because my current tweezers are really rusty i needed to get them anyway and i didn't want to be embarrassed so bought some of those uh, the table fee was a hundred dollars corals i didn't buy any corals this year i did come back with some uh branching pulsing xenia which was pretty cool but i did not pay for those uh always bring change bring a hundred dollars in change that's 20s tens and fives that way you can bust up 50s and 100s for people and it's super convenient for both of you all right here's the sales so on the square reader these are credit card payments i got 520 dollars there that is after their commission Cash, $945. Expenses, totaled to be $129.83. For a total, which is a personal record of mine, almost doubling what I've made in the past, I think the last two were at like 860-ish, $1,335.17. So if you came out to the frag swap, thank you so much for your support. This year, the hottest sellers, I would say, I had these reddish orange mushrooms. You might be able to see them in the lagoon tank. I, I've definitely featured them before, but they've kind of taken over a little bit. I did those for $20 a piece and they were gone in like the first 45 minutes. So those were a huge seller this year. Toadstools were pretty good, but it wasn't as as good as it has been. I think it's because everybody in St. Louis that wanted a weeping willow or wanted a long polyp toadstool now has one because of frag swaps in the past. Another thing I did this year was I offered more mini colonies. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten polyped zoanthid frags and those seem to be a hit too. So now that the swap is over and that's all done and I beat my previous record in sales and all that, I have really been looking forward to the clownfish breeding series because i've got some big news there's some good things there's some bad things but we're learning along the way and i'm going to take you on that journey a little bit further now i don't want to give too much away but be on the lookout for the next video i'm staring at not one but two hatch tanks i'm not going to give any more away we'll just say that as always if you like this video make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. It's funny because Salty Alley from Ocean State Aquatics uh, was just doing a video on how she power washes their frag racks in the back of the store and gets them nice and clean. So if you've never done that before and you've got a power washer, uh, do that because for whatever reason, I tried it both ways with just the hose and like a spray nozzle, and that didn't get all the algae and all the crap off of it. So. Uh, definitely use a power washer if you have one. Scott Crow and the crew have been doing some really awesome things. I love seeing the Seekonk store and the Coventry store and the warehouse now and all of the things that Scott and the OSA crew are doing. Uh, I know that I gush about them a lot, but really an inspiration for all of us. Okay, I have a big announcement. So one of my goals in life in general started several years ago, I'd say probably 10, 15 years ago. I always wanted to give a TED Talk. I've been watching TED Talks before they were cool, okay? Yes, I'm going to hipster that. So I was talking to Sean from Fritz, AKA Sean Snails, and he asked me if I wanted to speak at Aquashella Orlando 
2021. It took me a second to like process that because I think it's a really cool opportunity. Just a guy that started a YouTube channel and really focused on like making content on a weekly basis last year. And now this year I'm speaking at Aquashella. It just, these things just don't really line up for me uh, very well, but I'll take it and I'm gonna do it. Flights are booked. And if you are gonna be in Orlando, I'll be there too, June 12th and 13th in Orlando at Aquashella 2021. My wife and I are actually gonna do Disney for a couple days after that. We're gonna extend our trip a little bit. So we're kind of, you know, we're the annoying Disney adults. And you're like, yeah, I could, I could tell that about you, Remy. I knew that you were one of those sad Disney adults. But you know what, I don't care. I don't care. I like me some Splash Mountain, some Everest. I like Flight of Passage. Don't take that away from me. I feel like I'm flying. All right, now I gotta go raise these clowns. So, oops, shouldn't have said that. Meant to say that, but shouldn't have said that because it just kind of gave away the next video. But if you're here at the end, <laughs> you're privy to some information that people who checked out at minute seven aren't. So, congratulations. Hey, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. All right.